thank you, um, and good afternoon. I uh, bring you greetings from Charlotte, North Carolina, where spring is in full bloom. Um, uh, I uh, just want to thank uh, TCAT for the warm uh, welcome that you've given me on my first trip to Toronto. Uh, yesterday I had the pleasure to come in a day early and take a bike ride with a few of the other uh, folks here today, and it was uh, most enjoyable and a great way to see uh, your beautiful city, so thank you for having me. Uh, today, basically, um, I hope to give you a little bit of background about uh, complete streets implementation in Charlotte, um, go through a uh, six-step process that we have in our urban street design guidelines, uh, and then give you uh, some photos of example projects in Charlotte, um, and then at the end of the presentation, I've uh, listed a few challenges that we've faced, uh, and also have some thoughts related to monitoring how effective uh, our completed projects are. Uh, this first slide uh, is basically here just to give you a little background. Uh, it's to um, illustrate that Charlotte is very much a growing city. Uh, between 2000 and 2030, uh, we anticipate that um, a little over 300,000 new residents will move to Charlotte. Uh, that's equivalent to the population of places such as St. Louis, Pittsburgh, or Cincinnati. And unfortunately, they're not bringing their uh, transportation network with them. Um, so, uh, in Charlotte, we have the difficult task of trying to prepare for those folks and make sure uh, that we uh, can uh, keep them moving. Uh, the second graph is uh, just to also um, uh, elaborate on this point a little bit. Um, if you notice, uh, between 1950 uh, and present, uh, Charlotte has grown um, very rapidly. Um, the yellow line uh, shows the increase in land area through annexation of the city of Charlotte. Uh, the red line is the corresponding population growth. So between uh, 1950 and the 90s in particular, uh, many of the streets that were built um, did not include uh, provisions for cyclists, uh, pedestrians, and the like. Uh, so much of our work today is focused on retrofit projects and trying to go back and provide for those other modes of transportation. Uh, this slide, which um, the Transportation Action Plan was uh, mentioned earlier, uh, but basically it's a, a comprehensive transportation plan um, that looks out 25 years into the future and tries to predict the infrastructure uh, that we'll need in Charlotte to keep up with, uh, uh, with the growth. Um, as part of the TAP, um, it is sort of, uh, uh, it works hand in hand with our urban street design guidelines, uh, which is, is this slide. Um, which is actually the details of how to um, uh, design and implement these projects. Um, TAP goal number two um, is to provide more and better travel choices for users. Um, and uh, uh, you know, that's uh, more as far as quantity and street network and also uh, better streets. Uh, the USDG has uh, 17 policy statements. Uh, it includes a six step uh, planning and design process. Um, it has land use based street options and uh, design requirements and expectations. Uh, the intent of the USDG um, is to uh, create context based streets uh, that are safe and functional for all modes of transportation. Um, and also, uh, network is a very important part of the equation. Uh, between the 1950s and the 90s in Charlotte, um, our uh, sprawl. Um, didn't have a lot of street connectivity. Uh, we have a lot of cul-de-sacs in Charlotte and um, very few uh, facilities for cyclists or pedestrians. Uh, the USDG includes a, a wide cross-section of available options uh, to meet the needs of um, the users of the street network. Um, that goes from the main street um, concept, which is the most pedestrian-oriented of the options, uh, over to a parkway, which is much more uh, auto-oriented. In this slide, which I'll spend just a little bit more time on, uh, this is what we call the Urban Street Design Guidelines six-step process. Um, as I'm sure you know, uh, planning is so important um, to creating a, a good uh, project. Um, so basically, uh, we start by trying to define uh, the land use uh, context in the area surrounding the project. Um, 
transportation context. Uh, where, are, where are folks traveling? How do they want to get there? Um, and I would also mention that this process is very much uh, integrated with the public involvement process. Um, normally we have two to three public meetings as part of any planning study. Uh, the first one typically occurs um, after uh, and during steps one and two of this process. Um, so after we have a good layout of um, the land use context and the transportation facilities uh, in the area of the project, uh, we start working with the community to develop goals and objectives. Um, that begins with talking about efficiencies um, of, of the location. Um, you know, this is often very easy. Uh, we have lots of uh, streets in Charlotte that don't include sidewalk, uh, bike lanes, um, you know, have other uh, other issues. So uh, the efficiencies identification is typically very um, um, pretty pretty easy. Um, and then we also want to look at the future objectives. Um, often we have an area plan that's been completed that we can refer to for a project. Um, and uh, if not, you know, the public uh, is always eager to help. I'm sure in your case too. Uh, always have lots of good ideas and uh, know. Uh, where they live um, the best of anyone, so, so we really rely on them to give us some great feedback. Uh, once we define the uh, future objectives for a particular street, uh, we go through a decision-making process that includes uh, defining um, the street uh, type and the initial cross-section. Um, now, the previous slide that I showed you um, talked about the different street types, so um, that, that's where we are at this stage of the game and we actually develop an initial cross-section that we then um, take into step six, which is to talk about trade-offs and select a preferred cross-section. Um, in many of our locations, um, development has already happened, so we're in a retrofit situation. Um, and the trade-off discussion and what's most important to people um, is very, very important to getting a project that everyone's gonna be happy with. This slide is here just to give you an example uh, from the USDG of a prescriptive design. Uh, the majority of streets in Charlotte are built by developers through private development. Uh, most of those are neighborhood uh, type streets and for those sorts of streets we do have uh, prescriptive designs with uh, associated dimensions. Uh, the capital program in Charlotte, which is what I'm responsible for managing, um, we do most of our work on higher volume streets um, thoroughfares and the like. Uh, so for that process, um, this is what I call a non-prescriptive design, which uh, pretty much talks about the elements that you would like to see with an ideal project, but it doesn't include any dimensions. Uh, the dimensions actually uh, fall out uh, as part of the public in input process and um, work by our design teams. So what does this all really mean? Uh, in the real world, in Charlotte, like many places, uh, there's never enough money to do what you want to do. And um, when you actually get into the details of the project, it's uh, pretty complicated. So the next portion of my presentation is more to give you an idea of where we are in Charlotte today. Uh, this table basically um, talks about different types of projects that we've completed uh, in the street network and how many uh, we have underway. Uh, this photo is an example of one of the first intersection projects that we did that um, included some of these principles. It was the uh, South Boulevard and Woodlawn intersection. Uh, <laughs> off to the left of the screen there um, uh, is actually a uh, station for our new light rail system. Uh, we have uh, in 2007 just opened a 10 mile uh, light rail corridor, which is the first of several corridors in Charlotte. Um, and as you notice, um, this project, like most uh, other projects in Charlotte, it does include uh, dedicated bike lanes and improvements for uh, pedestrians at the intersection. Uh, this project is the uh, Roswell's Ferry and West Trade Street project. Um, if you notice to the left uh, there of the photo, um, before this project was done, um, Roswell's Ferry Road pretty much came straight uh, straight towards you on the screen there, and we just had a very uh, not well aligned intersection, and we had a safety problem, um, a lot of crashes uh, with vehicles. So out of that uh, safety issue for autos, we found a way to not only improve the condition for motorists, but also add other amenities like bike lanes and pedestrian improvements. Uh, this is the other end of the Roswell Ferry Road project. Um, basically. 
utility lines. Uh, those are very expensive to move, and so in this case, uh, we simply uh, fit the sidewalk in behind the utility lines. And part of why I picked this slide is just to show you that uh, all our projects don't um, look exactly the same, and we do vary uh, design of projects uh, based on, uh, on what we, we have to work with on these retrofit projects. I didn't want you to think that all our streets in Charlotte are uh, three lane streets. Uh, we do have uh, streets with more, uh, more travel lanes. Uh, this is actually on the edge of our uptown central business district. Uh, it's the Stonewall Street project. Um, this section of Stonewall Street is going under our uh, Beltway, which runs uh, around uptown. Uh, and it included um, two travel lanes in each direction for autos. Uh, we added bike lanes and pedestrian improvements, uh, pedestrian lighting. 